we're thrilled to be joined by some excellent speakers today. Um, so without any kind of further ado, what I would like to do is invite our speakers who are joining us today to introduce themselves. So Victoria, can I ask you to go first? Hi. Yes, of course. My name is Victoria Wheel. I'm production coordinator. Um, I've worked on um, lots of dramas and films. Uh, the last couple were uh, the end of the effing world series two and then i've just we just finished um industry for hbo which will be out later ne well next month in november on bbc2 so keep an eye out for that david bisfam I'm, I'm an assistant director and i've worked on a sort of range from uh, ongoing tv drama to feature films to music videos um the most recent stuff i've been working on is actually um true crime drama doc um which i did one just before lockdown haven't done one yet hopefully doing another one soon and um yeah that's that's me at the moment brilliant thank you so much david and okay. some, a face that may be familiar to some of you lloyd yeah uh, faith thank you for getting me onto the panel and i am stepping in um <clears throat> due to this terrible challenges that we have with covid19 our line producer and production manager dan Dathil evans based here in wales obviously can't make it today. So bear with me, I'm stepping in for that lovely lady and taking her part. So I'm breaking down the roles of line producer and production manager across the film and TV sector. And then um, having worked on many different shows in both roles, and I've grown up in the production department as well from, I went in at entry level as a floor runner, then became a third assistant director, second assistant director, first assistant director, and then became a production manager, and then a line producer. Having worked on various shows along the way, such as EastEnders, Casualty, um, and um, some kind of films that have happened in Wales. One Way to Denmark is now currently on Netflix uh, to be had, and Apostle as well. So um, I've had a varied, varied career really uh, along the way. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lloyd. I'm sure to ask you lots more about that. Mehdi, can I ask you to go next? Um, all the current and future film people. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, I work as a financial controller accountant, production accountant, um, and I've done various film and TV gigs. Um, I started working on TV. I did a TV series called Babylon for Channel 4 back in 2014. And I kind of made my, I work as a, I started as a trainee accountant and I made my way up to become a, a key accountant or a controller in a, a sort of American British films. The latest things I've done was like a, a sci fi for um, UK produced film for America. And then my last one was one of the Wes Anderson films called uh, The French Dispatch, which was shot in France. And it's due to be delivered probably last week or this week, I can't remember. But uh, because of the cinemas, we can't go and see them, but we have to stream them. <laughs> Brilliant. Again, I look forward to hearing more about that. Thanks, Mehdi, that's fantastic. And last but most definitely not least, Tyrone. Hey, how you doing guys, you okay? Um, I'm rookie in the game, basically. Uh, started with four days' work experience on the one. I uh, was very fortunate to get called back and to be asked to be a floor runner on the World of Worlds, which has just completed, uh, just finished that. So uh, my career is to, to be continued, basically. That, that's about it for now. Brilliant. Thank you. That's great. OK, so I'm going to launch into a first question with you all. Um, so um, I'm going to start with Victoria and then go around to each of you in turn. I'd, I'd love to find a little bit more about what are the key responsibilities in your job role. So within the journey of delivering script to screen, people might not know that as part of film, we, we literally build mini cities, right? Um, with so many different facets to them in film and television. So what in, in specifically with your role as production coordinator, what, what do you do? Well, as production coordinator, I come on board quite early on in um, prep. So um, I'll start maybe the kind of 
even before other people start. They might do stuff from home, um, assisting with the line producer, who would be like Lloyd. In um, we've worked together before, so that would happen. And um, we then can kind of start to plan basically um, how we, um, you know, do all the pre-production. So we'll get a production office, you know. Um, kit that out you know basically start from the bare bones you know hiring all the photocopiers all the desks even you know get all the paper get all those supplies in and then as more and more people join we'll have more people joining our team so we'll have um a production runner we'll have um uh, or production assistant we'll have production secretary we'll have an assistant coordinator a travel and um a travel and accommodation coordinator, production coordinator, then it'll go up to production manager, line producer, then with the producer. So depending on how big the project is, then that's how many people, you know, how big the team will be. And then we'll um, like basically um, work alongside every department. So we'll set up our own system. So we'll have like, you know, systems of like, getting start forms to people, getting them on the payroll, which then accounts will take over. So we work really closely with accounts. We'll work with um, other departments hiring anything in that's required. And yes, we're basically like a kind of, like a backbone really the production team is to like the production kind of creating everything, um, you know, with everybody else, like being a real kind of assistance. And then we'll, um, so with them, we'll help you know, get all the scripts and during um, production, we'll be there to kind of just make sure everybody knows where they're going. Everybody's, you know, there at the right time. Everybody's got exactly what they need. They're all doing it safely um, and make sure that every day is kind of completed and we'll kind of be also then as a production coordinator, um, I'll be kind of making sure everybody's just knows what they're doing and just communicating. That's a real key to the production office is kind of communicating, you know, making sure everybody's got all the documents they need, all the up-to-date scripts um, and the call sheets that get, you know, that get distributed. So, um, you know, we're just making sure that everybody knows exactly where they need to be um, and, and also planning ahead as well for the next kind of lot of filming. So, yeah, we're kind of assisting all the way along. And then once finished, uh, it completes, then filming is wrapped. Um, we um, will be there then just to kind of like get rid of the, the production office then kind of just disappear. So we'll off hire everything and um, kind of make sure everything goes back to, you know, gets rehoused, try and get some money back from things, sell things on, you know, we'll, we'll kind of make sure that everything's kind of all nice and tidy. And then we kind of as production, we then hand over to post-production who you'll speak to tomorrow. And then they kind of take the bat on and they kind of roll with it then. So yeah, we're, um, we're basically a big kind of support network for everybody um, at all the other departments. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's a great way of describing it, that whole pipeline of, of, you know, where it goes from beginning to end, but also the importance you said about time and scheduling and how mm -hmm. vital that is to a production. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it's worth saying a bit about call sheets and the importance of a call sheet and what it is. Yeah, of course. Well, the call sheet is the document. So when you go into production, so once we start filming, basically, once the camera stops rolling, we'll be issuing um, a document that um, basically, I'm trying to, my desk is such a mess, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a, an old call sheet <laughs> on here, but I can't see one. Um, but it's basically a document um, which outlines everything that's going to be happening for almost the next day's filming. So you issue it the day before. Um, so the assistant directors will kind of, the, the first assistant and the second assistant director will um, create this document along with then the production coordinator and the production manager to make sure um, that we've got everybody. So basically it tells us all the time, the schedule of the day, it'll say what cast are in, what crew, any additional crew, um, so we'll be, as production, we'll be booking additional crew. So we'll be letting everybody know that there'll be a, more like an additional camera, um, you know, additional, you know, anybody. Um, and it just tells everybody 
where they've got to be, what time they've got to be. It's quite detailed. It'll tell everybody what the weather's going to be like, what they should wear. <laughs> um, uh, it'll tell them what time breakfast is, which is the most important thing. Um, and yes, it basically gives all the information that you're going to need for that day's filming. So nobody needs to ask any questions, which they always do, but they shouldn't. <laughs> they should read the call sheet. Read the call sheet. <laughs> read the call sheet. That's the, that's the main tip. Thank you, Victoria. That's brilliant. David, can I move on to you to talk a little bit about your role? Yes, of course. Um, oh, am I not? Yeah, I'm not muted. <laughs> Just checking. Good. Yeah, no, of course. So, um, so I guess there's, I'll go through quickly the three stages. So I sort of started as a floor runner and then went on to a third assistant director. So as a third assistant director, sort of one of the first roles you do is sorting out all the radios for the different uh, departments. So that's part of the main parts of prep, um, going through the script and breaking down the background and all the different various extras that will um, be featuring throughout the, throughout the um, project, whatever it may be. Um, and then when it gets to filming, you're sort of, as a third assistant director, you're like the first assistant director's right-hand man. So you're on set directing the extras, um, dressing them to each shot, um, help looking after cast as well, as long, along with the floor runner, um, just trying to help communicate between each department and keep things clear. Um, also relaying from Video Village, where the director will be watching the whatever's being filmed on the monitor, uh, relaying to the first assistant director, cut, uh, any notes the director may have, like, again, but better. Uh, <laughs> or go it again or um, things like that or communicating to each department through radio um, and signing all the extras out as well at the end of each day which is great fun um, that's really good that's not to look forward to and then as a second assistant director um, again you're sort of it, this is more so so going through the budgets uh, sorry going through the script and doing an, uh, an extra budget for supporting artists um, so breaking it all down, working out with the budget that's been given to you by the production manager, line producer, um, coordinator, what money you've got to allocate to all the various extras throughout the project, and then breaking it down and discussing with them what's available and what isn't, talking to the director as well about certain compromises that might be able to happen, things that might be available, um, what sort of, what characters might take precedence if you're filming in a nightclub or a police station, can we take, can we lose 10 from the nightclub, 10 from the police station? Um, and also a huge part of seconding is sort of making contact with the with the cast, the, the main actors of any production. So sometimes you can be not the main port of call, but one of the first people that um, speak to them, send them their scripts, send them their um, shooting schedules of when they'll be expected to come on in, uh, organizing their travel, um, organizing, you know, costume fittings, makeup fittings, all that sort of thing. Um, and just trying to keep control of your, your budget of essays. And then a lot of that as well as meeting and greeting. When, when actors do come to set, you're sort of the first person that will meet them and you will take them to their trailers and just make sure they're looked after, essentially. And then as a first assistant director, you're, um, you're basically the sort of the director's right-hand man. So you're in charge of the schedule for the whole shoot from start to finish. Um, so trying to work out the best way of possibly filming whatever project may be, changing the order around to fit and trying to make sure you, you get the whole project filmed on time to budget if possible, um, going over the call sheet with the second AD, um, making sure the timings work and overseeing all the sort of health and safety aspects each day. Um, and I think that's about it. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Cause I was going to ask you about that. Like, why do we need so many ADs? Right. <laughs> but it's interesting to hear you break that down because it, the kind of the triangle of responsibility goes up and the budget <laughs> you have more responsibility for more crew more budget as you go up those ranks yes. and, and that's interesting to hear which segues nicely into me asking Mehdi <laughs> talking about budgets uh, about his role well budget um, I mean talking from my accounting point of view is that probably the most important thing we do or we deal with on a daily, um, uh, on a daily life, day-to-day -day things that we do, just from buying your phone to any sort of spending. But when it comes to film, it becomes very, very crucial because um, what will happen is like someone will come and say, like, I've got X amount of money that I want to spend to create this film, and obviously they 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 can't stretch their budget, and the smaller it is, it becomes more difficult because uh, the 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 amount is very, very limited. 
uh, for that reason, they hire us like uh, accountants or uh, financial controllers. So the, the accountant's job is basically just to uh, either create a budget or monitor it. Normally, the budgets are created by line producers or producers. And then they, we, we get given the budget and say, like, okay, then how, do, how, how are we going to control it? So we, we read the script and the schedule and we kind of try to match it with what, how we're going to spend it. There are two ways of accounting, which is two, two key parts of accounting. One is um, basically doing the transactions, uh, paying crew, paying suppliers. That's like a norm uh, every day. And then you, we make sure that everyone gets uh, paid on time. Otherwise, the, the whole shoot will be on hold. Um, the second part is reporting. So the, this, on a smaller budget, like it's not super difficult because it can be run by one person. Like let's say if you've got a budget of half a million as I've done, I've done before. So I ran the whole show or a whole film by myself. So my job was just doing the transaction, paying everyone and uh, reporting at the same time. But, but once the, the budget is big and it's stretched to like millions, one person can't do the job. So we get a team of like 10 to 20 people. And um, the, the, the reporting can be very, very difficult as well because some investors or some studios, they ask for a daily report. Um, and um, it, the, the, the daily report is just basically how much we spend and how much money we have left. During that report, we might encounter a lot of un, unexpected incidents or changes director turns up and say like I, I i want this scene to be shot this way so as an accountant my job is just to make sure that they they have the money or they they can do that schedule in a day when i started my job my job wasn't very difficult because i all i was caring was just doing a transaction and i was finishing at my time and i would go home happy and there was no problem as soon as i started working as an accountant Lloyd was one of my bosses and he said like, yo, you have to do this and it doesn't matter what time you play. So I had to stay in office like until 11, 12 o'clock, until like midnight or 2 a.m. Not true. Lloyd. <laughs> not true, not true. <laughs> I'll get a chance to talk in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a joke. No, I, I always finish on time. It was perfect production I work with Lloyd. But... Um, but there, there are difficult moments. I mean, I work on two Wes Anderson films. And then as a big director, he wants things on time and on a day. So I was like a 24 hours accountant. I, I was, uh, because the pro our production was uh, working in LA and I had to adjust my hours as well. I would, uh, have, to, I would have had to stay up until 3 a.m. And then they had like last minute calls. Like let's say he, he changed the schedule or he changed his plan for a day and he ordered X amount of uh, equipment for that day and then we had to just like, get everything ready. That wasn't a difficult part. The, the, the most difficult was, was the reporting because it, in production, unlike normal accounting, when you've got everything organized and everything ready for the, for the time, in accounting deadlines changes. So you might say I'm reporting, uh, I'm supposed to report on Tuesday evening, but they might uh, one the report on Friday afternoon, a few days earlier. It, 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 the difficulty is just being, uh, being able to um, organize enough to deliver all these reports and everything. And unexpected events is just a very um, uh, li likely thing that happens on a daily uh, basis in the film uh, industry. Um, but it, if an accountant or financial controller can manage to work as a team with their line producer or production team, everything runs smoothly. But if, if there is any errors or if there is any kind of miscommunication, it kind of puts us in a lot of trouble. Luckily, I haven't had uh, much trouble and I've managed to kind of make my way up and work with a lovely team as you, <laughs> see, uh, you can see some of them here. Um, and I'm so grateful that I've managed to um, work in such environment, but they, 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 the chance of um, getting to a difficult production uh, are higher too, but it all depends on the, uh, on the individuals. The last 
part of accounting, which is not normally done by uh, some of the um, small budget accountants, the small budget of accountants that they audit, audit part, which is how uh, creating a, an organized um, uh, filing system where you've got all the backing for whatever is spent. So when the audits are done, the investors or financial uh, uh, financiers they are able to uh, file their taxes on time, and they get uh, and they can get their tax uh, money or whatever uh, back, and uh, make sure that uh, they don't get audited and they don't they don't get scrutinized for whatever they spend. So this is the whole procedure from um, during transaction to the audit. That's the whole accounting job. That's brilliant. Thank you. It's really interesting listening to you all talk because there's real themes coming out in terms of um, how important budget is, organisation, it's a business, so decisions, whereas you think sometimes that a director will have ultimate creative control to make decisions. Actually, Mehdi, it's you that says yes or no because you hold a budget, right? <laughs> <laughs> Normally I don't, but I try to get involved. You know, I just uh, found <laughs> my job to kind of <laughs> make sure that people don't overspend. <laughs> yeah I think I think it's a, a business and the but the extent of the organization that goes into making sure that things are on time and therefore within budget um it just seems like such an important part of the whole process what well, it is it's the backbone of the process as as I think Victoria said Lloyd can I ask you about your roles well yes hi Faye thank you for having me today um Yes, my, the, the, the two job roles that I'm going to pick up on today, the line producer, as Mehdi has been mentioning, and also um, um, also David as well as, as Vicky, and also the production manager's role. So they're far, far very different to each other, although they both collaborate and work quite closely with each other during the production period. So I'll start off with the line producer's role. It's a three segment role effectively of time periods of work. So I will get employed on a freelance basis by the executive producer and potentially the producer of the show who are the first people to, to effectively create the business from the outset, either being a film or a TV drama series. So I get employed by them and then I join them. And my first priority is to develop the budget. It. I get a script, I work out from the script, hopefully taking the experiences of the years I've spent in production along the way to gather those thoughts and break down the script and create a budget. The, I will then present that to the development team in the, in the producing world and they will be working hand in hand with their financiers to make sure that that budget can work to the potential funding that could be available to us. That's an important moment because there'll be a lot of talks in regards of how the script is structured editorial set against the amount that we're allowed to spend on. So it's a big responsibility for the line producer working hand in hand now by now with his financial controller or his production accountant to make sure his maths are correct, that the, the potential of the budget sits correctly moving forward. Then that's what we call pre-production period. Then there becomes the, pre the prep period where, where now it gets a hugely more exciting and more people come on board. And my responsibility is to work with the creative producers and the, cre and the executive producer to effectively reach out, put a call out to potential heads of department that we would like to come on to the show. So, most probably the deals will be made with their agents because a lot of them might have agents like production designers, makeup designers, um, uh, people of that sort. Um, and I would be working quite closely with the creative team and phoning and talking to those agents and, and striking deals with those agents to get those heads of department on board. As soon as we get them on board, that takes a bit of pressure off me because I allow them to bring their teams on, of course, which, as you know, across these four events, we find out about those roles and the assistant roles that these heads of department truly need within their team. I have now, by that stage, worked out a set payroll salary wage budget for each of those departments, having made the deals 
on the financial side with the heads of department, then I allocate that pot of money, which I have to comply with a rate card, which is an important um, thing to point out. There is a rate card known to the industry through unions called BEC2 and PACT, which are people you can easily Google and get the information from them. Those rate cards hold all position potentials across a five day working week or a six day working week. And it actually tells us in the industry that we must comply with those daily wages or weekly wages and that we try to strive for that and, and to keep the unions happy that we meet that. And I'm sure those links will be available at, at a further point, but they are worth looking at and they are available to look at and download offline without being a member of that union. I'd like to point that out as well, because that's how we get our information, believe it or not, as well as line producers. But moving swiftly on from that, now the teams are being built up. Now, let me set some times on this. Say for argument's sake, it's a 10 week prep period and a 10 week shoot period. So in those 10 weeks, my job as a line producer is to make sure that the HODs have been, um, I'll abbreviate it, have been employed. They're continuing on with their teams. I've also allocated their budgets. They'll have a budget per, um, per department to spend on to make the set to make the prosthetics, to make the makeup, to make the costume. They have to then comply and work to that budget within the whole shoot period and the prep period. And they are bringing those budgets in reports back to me as heads of department. So I then filter that through to Medi and I filter it through to the producers and I keep a full check on all that. If they're overspending, then I have to really work out a way of pulling that back. Because at the end of the day, as they say, if you've only got five pounds in your pocket, you can't go spending six pounds. <laughs> so we have to work it, we have to really keep it tight. So I work quite closely at that stage with Medi of this world or a financial controller, because of course we have to cost report these wonderful moments of the department spending money. And by the way, they'll spend money from the first day of work. It usually is the case. So if they're buying a pencil or a piece of paper for their department, that is a cost. That is a cost set against the budget. We report it and we report it to our producers and we report it to our exec producers and they record this eventually in an audit to the financiers. So that process all done and everybody's on board, where do we get equipment from? Well, that's my job. I have to have a really good working relationship with the managing sales teams and directors of the bigger companies that supply lighting, supply camera equipment, supply sound equipment, supply the catering, supply the costume and maker truck facilities, the mini cities, as we said previously. I'm creating those mini cities right around the film set. And it's my responsibility to set that at a rate that I fully understand that they'll accept. Sometimes I'll try for more and I'll always try for less. It's a bargaining deal and it's it's the fun of it and the hard part of it because you have to get the deal done. When we get the deal done and everybody's on board, now we have the suppliers, now we have the equipment, now we have a cast, now we have all the assistants, all the teams. That's just about coming to the end of my prep period. And that is a busy period for a line producer. For all that to happen, I can't do it alone. On a big budget or a small budget these days, I need a right-hand man, lady, to join me as the production manager. That person sits between myself and the whole of the crew in the office would work quite closely with Vicky, also with Medi, and also that production manager would work extremely closely with David, and most probably would have employed Tyrone as well, you know, so that's the, the responsibility of the production manager. Having done that role myself to progress to line producer, um, it's a really good role to have in regards to have a real good understanding of the nuts and bolts of the system. So your job as a production manager, when you come on to prep, you work closely with the line producer to make sure the paperwork get out to all the crew because there's a lot of health and safety documents. There's deal memo documents and, think, and contract documents. Those are all our responsibilities between myself 
the production manager and, and Vicky to make sure that everybody's contracted. And then also that includes the cast. We have to create contracts. They've got specific different contracts. And I've been very lucky to work on American systems as well as UK systems. And believe it or not, the American system is slightly more complicated across budgeting as well as contracting. The American system has what they call the SAG contract. It's a very um, um, uh, clever contract to do with the American actors, but it brings different ideas. So you imagine if you're working in the UK with a set of union ideas from America, whilst your crew is on a set of union ideas in the UK. So there's a lot of work, a lot of paperwork for this team to do within the office. But I don't want to bore everybody with all that today. That's a learning process. But the production manager very much looks after the well-being of the crew on the floor, the well-being of the cast and the well-being of the production office in general. Their responsibilities in the days to report back to me as a line producer of any difficulties that the crew are having or getting or achieving in a day. And also the wonderful part of the day that everybody is achieving. It both gets reported back to me. And then I report that back to the executive producers and the producers and the funders eventually. Because at the end of the day, it's important for them to know that the production is running smoothly. So the other part, part of the, um, I'll cut this one short now, the production manager's role is employment. So I think it's important for me to say here now and signpost people, if you Google production managers UK, you'll find a really interesting pot of names, email addresses, the production managers guild. These are all great places to go and find out for yourselves. Send an email to these people. I kid you not. If I get an email in a day from somebody as a production manager, I'll list them on my folder as potential floor runners, third assistant director, second assistant director. I'll do my research on them. I'll find out their CV references and I'll look into these things. And because that's part of my job, because the whole point of my job is to get the best crew I can get my hands on and who are the most passionate and most energy driven to run that show for us. So production managers are really important people to get connected with. I think that brings me to the end, Biffy. Brilliant. Thanks, Lloyd. That's really, really really interesting um, and there's loads of questions I can ask you but I know I'm going over time already. Tyrone I'm going to come to you because in our last session which I think you were attending we had so many questions about runners and we know it's the entry level role. Can you tell me about your experience of being a runner and how you got into it? Yeah um, like I said I'm very new to the industry. Um, I didn't know a lot about it or how to get into the industry. Uh, one of my friends actually got me in on work experience and I was taken on from there um, well, all, all I have to say is with the scripts, that is your Bible. <laughs> Make sure you don't ask anything about the scripts. Uh, basically, my role would be coming in in the morning, meeting the cast members, uh, sending them to the trailer, make sure they've got their scripts for the day, uh, breakfast, uh, learn how to make a cup of coffee if you don't, because <laughs> everyone's coffee mad. Um, so basically, uh, transporting the cast members and essays to on and off screen, um, if they needed transport to locations or anything like that, um, any personal requests that they needed. Uh, a lot of cans of Coke was asked for. Um, but um, yeah, it's very, um, I didn't know much about the industry. Um, I didn't know about different departments. When I got into the industry, a lot of people were asking me what I what actually wanted to do. And I thought I was just being in the, the floor and the AD assistant role. But um, there's so many in the different departments that you can go in from from there but, um in a whole it's, it's, it's there's a lot to take on it's a whirlwind um but uh, what i got from it is a lot of satisfaction um like i said building rapport with the cast members other parts of the the, the, the crew as such um but yeah for the they just finished the world of war series mm. now that was quite crazy with uh, the covid going on and everything like that but um yeah, it was just, it's just amazing to be involved in the actual scene and see what goes on behind the scenes. And so, um, yeah, just looking looking to uh, continue my career. So that's really? But it really, is, like I said, I, I am just starting in, in the industry. So... Um, but that's interesting because so is everybody else, I think, that we're work that, you know, that's listening right now. Yeah. What would be the one tip that you had for everyone who wants to be a runner? And because that is the entry level, isn't it? In terms yeah, of... Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Yeah, I think from, from being an AD runner, um, then then people progress from there. Like like I said, with um, 
a very light here. Um, it's just just being being punctual on time, making sure you're at the right place at the right time, and and just 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 being as good as your job as you can be. Like I said, um, I've just got into the industry. I'm not too sure about how you go to get onto the next film and set or what have you. So you need a lot of contacts, and you only get that by by doing good at your job, basically. So um, if you're asked to do something, you you do it. Um, like I said, to say it again, make sure you can make a cup of coffee. Um, but just, 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 um, just, just being aware of what else mm. is going around with you, not just that your job, whatever, whatever one else needs, and you know, because you, there might be an object that they need and they can't find it, and you'll be the one to go and get it. And if you're taking time, that's taking time off the production. So, mm. so just being punctual and, and then just, just trying to be as good as your job as you can be, really. Brilliant. Thank you. Again, it's about time and organisation and how important those things are, you know, as equal as in the importance as creativity is um, in terms of making sure the show runs. Um, so next next question I'm going to throw out to you all. Thank you so much, Tyrone. Um, can you tell us about career pathway and in, t in terms of your entry and progression opportunities from where, where you are now? I'll start with Mehdi. Oh. <laughs> this, this time. <laughs> right. Um, career progression. How do I start? Well, um, I was a qualified accountant, but I kind of wanted to retrain myself. Uh, obviously, the qualification was from a different country. So I went to Cardiff and I studied um, accounting again uh, in College Glen Harper. Mm -hmm. I did my AAT and then I was a qualified accountant. I was trying to find a, a bit uh, accounting in the business sector, but I, it was a bit difficult at the time because I didn't love, I mean, I, I went on two jobs and I didn't love it as much. I had this friend who was working in London on um, East Ender, and then she invited me to work um, on one of her jobs, but I couldn't move back to London. And then later on, she said like, there is another job which is kind of a trial with a uh, with a with an experienced accountant on a channel for a TV series called Babylon. This is 2014, and I came down to London. I, I was trying to live in Cardiff, but I I couldn't find the film production. So I came down to London. I did work on three weeks, and then I finished my work placement and then the accountant said oh you can stay I loved it I mean even the working hours was crazy so normally I was like nine to five but I was working seven to ten and eleven p.m. the assistant had some problems and then the accountant said okay you're doing a great job I want to take you to the next job I said okay fantastic I, it was a struggle living in London with the uh, with the money that they were paying me but I said okay there is a bright future. If I love this job, it just suits me perfectly because I can work as a freelancer. I can choose when to work and when not to work. So I carried on. And then the next job, they, they offered me a job in Kent on a TV series called Tunnel. I went there for six months. I had a year of experience and I got the job in Cardiff on a film. I got called back in Cardiff. I came back to Cardiff. I did a perfect job with this American line producer. He said, maybe you're perfect for, to become a production accountant because you're too bossy. I said, okay, <laughs> you're more bossy than an accountant. I said, excellent. So I, I got the confidence while I was working in Cardiff. I took a two, months off, uh, two months off. I basically read whatever I, all the notes I had for the two years of working, got to work on an American, big American show called Guilt in London. And I think that's, that was the time when I realized that all my confidence and experience in a very, very short period of time, I mean, it was less than two years that I felt that I can do anything I want in my life because all the people I work with, they were all great in their uh, position. They were uh, American and uh, British, um, uh, confident, experienced accountants. Well, on top of that, my, I wanted to uh, learn more and achieve more in my career. 
I was very open to new opportunities. So I wouldn't say no to anything. If, if there was a job in Africa or South America, I would just go with it. Um, the, the training to become an assistant is a bit different to become an accountant. So a lot of people finish with in, in the film school, they think, oh, they can do anything in film. But to work in finance, you need a bit of accounting background and understanding. Luckily, I had that background, which helped me to, um, to, to understand the balance sheet, to understand both sides of accounts. Um, so when, when they offered me the first accounting job on Isle of Dogs, which is like a 50 million budget film. And I was in shock when the, uh, uh, when the production, production team said, uh, you, 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 we, we believe in you. I was, uh, there was a team of two or three people and they were in post-production. Post-production, that size of a job is quite huge. Uh, so they said, because you understand uh, the accounting side, we are trusting you to keep you as, an, as a post-production accountant for a six-month job. So they kept me on. And that was the time which was like a kind of breakthrough. And I, I, I felt that I can, if I can do that size of the budget, I can do anything. Luckily, after finishing that project, I, anywhere I went, um, because I had these two huge American uh, uh, films in my CV, anywhere I went, they said, okay, then you, because you, you can manage, you can manage to deliver, we, we will offer you, um, we will offer the job, uh, we will offer you the job. So the, 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 the key to uh, become a financial controller in my um, position was just to understand multi-currency and understand the balance sheet. Um, without the accounting background, it would have been difficult, but I don't say that anyone who doesn't, don't understand accounts or who doesn't study accounting are unable to do these jobs because most of the accountants I work in our sector, they don't have any accounting background, but they are good with numbers. So anyone who is any of the any of the people here that who are interested in accounts, I would say welcome. I mean, it it can be a bit boring. I mean, uh, as people say, but like, you know, it's 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 um, it's satisfying. You know, when when you look at, I mean, I, I probably try to promote my uh, my proposition, but it it is a fascinating world because you have to work with creative uh, people. At the same time, uh, you kind of understand numbers and you kind of analyze numbers and uh, apply them in, in, a, uh, in a creative um, business. And it, I think it's one of the most difficult uh, jobs to do that you kind of fit bit, literally between a finance world and, um, a, and a creative world. But the, the, uh, the satisfying bit is like you kind of manage to start a project and then finish it and then you become the god because you just feel completely full, uh, feel that you, you have you've completed the project. Um, films are not easy to make because um, the, because of the size of the budgets. I mean, you, we're talking about uh, probably 1,000 pounds a day to uh, half, half a million pounds money spent a day. So yeah. it, it, it's it, a lot of money. Be, Hmm. Yeah, it is, it is quite stressful. I mean, I, I worked in production and <laughs> spent half, half a million in one day. It, it hmm. was quite stressful because it's there, you're, you're, uh, hmm. we are dealing with large sums. But um, at the same time, it's, it's quite hmm. um, um, interesting and it's quite satisfying that you, 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 you've got that capacity you know, as a yeah. human being. Like, you know, you, as an individual, you, you can manage it a huge, huge number. I think it's interesting the point that you make about confidence um, because I've seen people's confidence grow working on their first production and then it moves on. And, and I think it's um, a really key point in terms of sort of progression, getting that confidence and then sort of being able to feel like you can do more and, and go more. I mean, it's the same in any role, but it's particularly pertinent, I think, in TV and film. I don't know what your experience would be of that, uh, that Lloyd. Well, <laughs> um, 
I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Faye. Confidence building throughout your career is, is a challenge to yourself personally, as well as others within your team. So you're always trying to look out for yourself as well as others within your team. But I was very lucky. I moved from Aberystwyth, not so confident young man, uh, down to Cardiff. I, I followed a, a very quick career progression in, in going to a college to learn about stage management, Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama here in Cardiff. Um, I got through that moment. I went into theatre a little bit, but I just had this calling for television and film. I don't know why I had it in college days. So I used those skills. Uh, it, they weren't to waste. I actually <coughs> fully used them. I took them on board and they became really, really relevant to my move towards television as a floor runner. And thousands of emails are sent out, thousands of phone calls I made, but I got that job. And when I got that job, I was going to be the best floor runner that Wales had ever created. And why? Because I was freelance. I had to challenge the freelance sector because there's many people out there challenging back. So you have to get that job. So I brought passion and energy into making cups of tea with a smile and try to be the best floor runner I could be and the kindest as well and the most humble it, as well I think and then, it is about being the best isn't it it's about trying to be have, the best you have to be. try and be like in so many sectors it's not just our industry but quickly mm. then my career progression I found interest like Tyrone said you look at those departments you're in a great position to look at everybody's department so god do I fancy costume makeup sound no, actually, that guy who's got the walkie-talkie, the radio in his hand, running the set, that looks like a really interesting job. So that's, I set my goal when I was 21, 22, 23, to become that person eventually. So I, I, I set my path. I went from floor runner to third. That took me, a, I think I'm going to give you time factors just for your audience, hopefully, to hear. I gave it a good year and a half as a floor runner mm. because I felt that that was the right thing to do. And I have to admit, I think most do. So to set that goal a year and a half and hopefully move forward, how do you move forward? Well, you friend and you connect with the team you're working with on your first job mm -hmm. because everybody's freelance and that team moves forward. They move forward to other jobs. The first gets the job, connects to his second because he likes his second, he connects to his third and his floor runner. So effectively, you might go on with that team or they might suggest you to another team who's working and looking for those positions to fill. Then all of a sudden your contact database is growing. So either make sure you've got a real good big book as I used to have in the old days. <laughs> but now we have iPhones and note sections. It's easier to put all your contacts, your numbers and everything in those moments because you're going to need them along the way. As I found when I became the line producer. So Brilliant. I spent... As a third, two years in that position, I gave myself two years because that is a technical specified position in the AD team and you need to learn your way there. And, and you will make mistakes, don't get me wrong, but your team will support you and because they want to make you the best third AD that's possible. So open your ears to everybody and... I talk less in those positions because I can't hear if I'm talking. So I listen to everybody around me and find out about what is the best third AD? Who, what do I need to do? So I did that through thirding. I did it through seconding. I spent four years as a second AD. Then I did a little shift change because I had that goal to be the person with the walkie talkie in the set. I wanted to learn about location management because I thought, a first on the set really connects to all the HODs, but mainly the location manager. So I thought, why not? So I, I became an assistant location manager straight after seconding for a couple of years, uh, for a year. And then I became a location manager for two years. And then I felt that role, I found out about the role. It was a difficult, challenging role, but just didn't felt it, feel it was for me. So I moved to firsting. And I've done so for, I did that for 15 years and um, very luckily across many continents, worked with many different crews around the world in that role. And that is just such a rewarding role. And I thought that that was it for my career until somebody said, well, I wonder if you could make us a production manager on casualty. And whilst I was working there as a first. So I did. And they trained me up as a production manager in-house, again, still freelance. 
And then that led to EastEnders because they recommended me to EastEnders. And I ended up doing the New Year special, the Christmas special, going to wonderful places to the underworld uh, water tank of um, the Pinewood stage where the Bond throws his car into and jumps into it. I was there as a little boy from Aberystwyth at the age of 40, uh, mid 40s, running a shoot for EastEnders, putting Danny Dyer in a, in a big water tank. And I, I just felt that was it. I got there. And <laughs> then I moved swiftly on to somebody giving me the opportunity to become the line producer. And that's what I've been doing so for the last six, seven years. Thank you so much, Lloyd. Um, it's really interesting to hear that journey and also knowing that you're responsible for EastEnders Christmas Days is sheds a whole new light on you, in my opinion. <laughs> um, Victoria, I'm, I'm conscious of time um, and I want to make sure that people have got enough time to ask questions, but can I ask you briefly a, a little bit about your role and how you've moved into it and where you can progress? So I always loved film, always had this thing I wanted to work in film. Um, and I was told actually that I was too nice to work in film. This is a point that people were like, you're too nice to work in TV and film. And do you know what? I've never met, I've, I've only met nice people in TV and film. So never, if anybody says that to you, that, you know, if anybody's thinking about it and they think, oh, too nice, then don't listen to people. Anyway, so I am... Um, just I, I studied it did a degree um and then I worked um I got some I just work work experience I just sent out just contact as many people as I could work experience I did as much as I could I did radio I did news I did factual did like game entertainment anything I could do I would just do and just get as much com um much um just as much experience as I could and then it's about learning about how the industry works as well. Yeah, isn't it? absolutely. In business as much as anything in all the different facets of it. Mm, absolutely. And it's really interesting to see what, and then I got experience on something in London as a drama and I really liked that. I liked all the different departments. I liked meeting all the different departments um, and how it all comes together. And then I worked then, actually the next thing I did, I worked with Ardman Animations on their film, the Were Rabbit film, and I loved that. That was that was a lovely thing to, to work on. And then I just um, again just met people, just keep kept meeting people. I you know go to events and just meet people. And then I um, got my CV passed on to Doctor Who when that kind of started back in Cardiff, and then I started as a production manager on that. And um, and then just kind of worked with that team for a while. They, there was a spin-off called Sarah Jane Adventures. And I did like, yeah, about a year and a half as a floor runner. Then I went on as a production secretary onto that with that team. So it was the same team as Doctor Who um, on the um, Sarah Jane Adventures. And then, yeah, you just kind of meet people. And as we're all freelance, we mm. kind of then step up and then eventually um, I did a couple of years as production secretary. And then I got um uh recommended as production coordinator um and then yeah i've been just been doing that then for for ages actually <laughs> for like probably so much uh, about people sorry. isn't it yeah sorry it's, it's, it's it, yeah. what you're saying it's all about yeah. being a people person it really is it's about getting on with people i think that's almost half if not more of just being a, t a people person and a team player and just um and then obviously having a, a good work ethic as well and, and getting the work done. And, um, but yes, no, it's, um, it's been a lovely, um, an amazing kind of journey, actually. I've met amazing people. Mm. And, but it's, it's, it's about persistence as well. And you will get a lot of, you know, if you keep asking people, you know, just keep asking people, just keep getting your name, you know, building up that CV. It's really important, actually. And just that keenness. And people, like, when I look at a CV of, like, you know, runners, for potential production runners, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll see how keen people are, how much work experience, how, you know, how genuine they are. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, that enthusiasm as well. It's just to keep kind of, um, and, you know, like, um, yeah, no, it's just keep persisting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm persisting if you want to do it then it'll get there in the end that's good advice that's really good advice it is about persistence um 
I think I remember watching things like this when I wanted to get into the industry and just being like, oh, I really want to do that. Like, it's that hunger for it. I think, oh, I can do it. And it kind of pushes you on, doesn't it? To kind of yeah, anybody to do can do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's, and it's a wonderful uh, career to get into. You, meet, you have such amazing experiences. I'd really recommend it. Brilliant. David, can I ask, do you have anything to add to that before we open up to the floor? Uh, what do I I sort of fell into ADing really. I sort of, I, I, I've always been a movie geek and my granddad um, used to be a camera operator. He'd sort of retired wow. long before I'd come to age. And I actually wanted to direct, but I didn't quite know how to get into the industry. And there was a guy a couple of years ahead of me in my school who everyone sort of said, oh, he works in the industry. And I was quite lucky. I bumped into him on a drunken night out <laughs> when I was about 18 and saw him in a bar and just approached and said, uh, cause he, his sister, had worked with my sister on, in a completely different industry and um yeah I just sort of said is there any chance I could get any work experience and he got me on a set the following at the end of that week so it was very lucky I fell into it and then started working as a runner um work experience first of all started to get paid for it I went off and did a film and media production degree in Sheffield for three years and then when I sort of came back I started working much more regularly I got back in touch with the contacts I'd made as a runner and um before before i'd gone to uni and then I, I sort of my first main gig I did a few sort of small independence films then came on to holby city which has been amazing for me it was sort of like my bread and butter over the years and i've sort of worked up as a runner left and made worked on a few films as a runner varying degrees of success um some big movies like there was clash of the titans i think was my first the remake <laughs> i'm not that old. <laughs> um was my first big one and i sort of go back to holby city and they put me up to a third assistant director and I had a bit of experience on EastEnders um, and then we'd start getting experiences on, on movie sets as a third assistant director as mm. well. Um, so I'd sort of jump between TV and film quite often and then it's a bit weird for me because in my time off I try and make my own projects as well. So I'm mm. sort of a, I am an assistant director but I'm not a diehard assistant director, I've sort of got other things I want to do as well so mm. I dip into different job roles essentially um, which I know is the same for a lot of people but um, yeah. I think a lot of it's just been luck and I've made some great friends and contacts from mm. the various jobs I've done um it will either give you a call or sometimes mm. I've used Facebook <laughs> unemployed if anyone needs an AD or of any description um that point just you made about kind of multi-skilling and having different roles and doing different things I think is really really prevalent in in the screen industries and I think Lloyd made it in the last session as well around you know these are really skilled jobs and it's not just one job. Often you're doing a number of jobs that, that yeah. you know, with lots of different skills. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, cause I think I mean, a lot of people might actually have passions for other departments that they want to get into one day um, or they might not, or they might change, have a complete change mm. of heart. You know, as, as I was talking about, he's progressed and gone to different things. Um, and I think as a runner, um, as Tyron was saying earlier, it's it's quite lovely because you get to see what each department does so you might completely change mm. your entire course or plan of what what um department you actually want to get into and i know people who've been working in the industry for yeah. years who completely change it anyway just because they've had enough of one thing and they think actually i'd really like to try something else nice. um mm. so i think anything's kind of possible with it and you're not necessarily stuck to one route yeah i think that's quite nice um kind of place to draw it to the close just to, to show that there's that, that kind of multifaceted that you can move between those roles and there is opportunities as well just one quick before we go um Tyrone I haven't asked you this question because I know you're very new into the role yeah. so I, I didn't want to ask you but obviously yeah. you want to progress and maybe this is an opportunity for you to sell your words yeah um so like I say the, the thing is um like David said there um, when I got there, I was my head was just AD in, and that was my job. Mm -hmm. And then you get more and more people asking you what you actually want to do. Well, I didn't know what what uh, what departments you go into. But if anyone out there is doing in in props, uh, I would love to get in the prop involved with that. Uh, hope you could help me there, Lloyd. But, um, <laughs> I, said, I yeah, sure can. <laughs> it's really hard to network in person yeah. at the moment, so you've got to make the most of it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well done, Tyrone. I like <laughs> your approach. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold you to that point, Lloyd. <laughs> but, uh, like you're saying, yeah, this, 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 you may go in there with one thing on your mind and uh, come out doing a totally different thing. Just like you say, just try your best, um, be friendly with everyone, try and make a good rapport with everyone because you never know where you're going to end up at the end of the day. So, 
Ray, could I kindly just ask for two seconds to signpost something to Tyrone now? It might be of interest to others. But the BBC casualty system now locked into Cardiff in the BBC Rothlock Studios yeah. run an apprenticeship scheme mm -hmm. in the props department. I will signpost you to them, but you can Google BBC Casualty Talent Team and you could send an email to them directly and tell them what your aspirations are. You never know, being based in Newport, they might look towards you and offer you a placement on one of their apprentice schemes. It's it's a thought. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for that, Lloyd. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. And I think Screen, Screen Alliance Wales also have jobs if you haven't already signed up for their website and to their talent portal. Um, I have a feeling they Correct. were some props at recent, for some prop makers recently. So it may be um, a case of linking in there as well. I've gone completely over time, which makes me a bad chair, but it's been lovely talking to you and I didn't want to stop. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to you all. I'm going to hand over to Siobhan so that we can make sure that everyone has a bit of time to ask questions. Hello, hi everyone. So um, thank you, Faye and the panel for your like fantastic contributions. It's been really fascinating listening to you all and I'm sure our audience agree. Um, so now is the time for you to have your say, please. Hopefully you've been storing those questions in your mind. Um, now is the time to ask them. It is hard, um, but um, there's, that's the little bit of negativity to do it with it. The positivity is um, it's nice not to work for just one boss along your career path, especially if you don't like them. <laughs> um, so it's kind of nice to be able to change jobs sometimes. And it's good for your, for my well-being, I have to admit, I fully enjoy moving on to the next job. But just to let Lois know, um, it, it's sustainability in that in our jobs are very difficult. You do need the great energy whilst you're working on the job, but you need even greater energy finding the next job. But the tip and advice I would give you, if you've got a contract of say 15 weeks offered up to you in a year, my first emails go out in the second week of our contract to the next potential employers. Why? It gives me 10 weeks of money coming into my account to pay the rent, to pay the car bill, to pay for the new tire. Whilst I know my energies have been spent on the set for that employer, whilst I'm seeking for my new job opportunity as soon as that job comes to end. It'll never sit perfectly. If you can finish on Friday and start on a Monday, I'm sure my team around me here on the panel would say exactly the same. Sometimes you need to recharge your own batteries. But if, it's, if you're lucky to get that, so be it. But if not, expect to have a couple of weeks off, possibly a month. And that's where I put the other bit of advice in, always hold back in your bank account a bit for the rainy day. Absolutely. That's such good advice. Right. That's such a, a question. Uh, I think as Lloyd well. said, actually, it was, it's a really good point of finding people online and, and sending emails and sending across your CVs. Uh, the knowledge is a good source, which I used quite early on the book, the knowledge, which you can buy. It's quite expensive, but it's got a list of everybody <laughs> in the world that you could try and uh, email your your cv to and people are looking for people as lloyd said so i think it's you know sending them an email with your call, with your cv is not going to annoy anyone i think if you're sending something consistently and badgering them that could start to upset people i would i wouldn't phone them either i'd send an email or something written because they could be busy on set they could be having a holiday and you don't want to upset them um i have found um Facebook has been brilliant for me in times when I've been, because I used to do every after New Year's Eve, send emails to all the contacts. Hello, Happy New Year. Hope you had a lovely Christmas. Here's my latest CV, which I still sometimes do. But Facebook's been great of just letting people know I'm unemployed. Does anyone need me? <laughs> and you're not actually badger badgering anyone. So that's been a really good thing, which I've only started doing in the past few years. All I was going to say is, and this is just from my personal experience, is that I did a film and media production course and I've not for one one time in my life been asked about my degree. Now, certain people have, but I'm just saying I don't think there's any right or wrong way, so maybe don't let it cloud your decision. Okay. I, I'm yeah. glad I did my course. I enjoyed it very much, but it's never actually benefited me or caused me anything negative either. 
Mm. I, I also did a broadcast media degree. There's loads of us. Um, but I, I, I kind of slightly differently. I actually found that it, it gave me, it was a broad degree. Um, and initially I started to do it with English as well. But that gave me quite a broad uh, knowledge of lots of a number of different things. So uh, we did television production, film production, uh, radio, um, and a various other different it gave me a little bit of all the things to, to kind of see. So I, I guess I suppose it depends where you want want to go or where you see yourself wanting to be. I suppose I would also say maybe get some experience at the same time, practical experience as well. Absolutely. I think it depends which university you go to, but I would always try and look for courses. If that's your... Um, for example, I work for the University of South Wales, so there is lots of opportunities with the courses there to have production experience. But I think that's absolutely a question to ask when you're going to apply to the course. That's really important to find out. You should be asking them questions to see if they're right for you, just as, as well as the other the other way around. I think that's an important point. Um, you know, what can you offer me? But also, what kind of practical experience and industry connections do you have? Because University of South Wales does a lot of work with Wales Screen Alliance and Bad Wolf. They have placements there. So, um, you know, I, I, it's worth looking into what they do with industry if that's important to you. Does that help? Um, Faye, can I, can I also add in, just, just to the lovely lady, just, just to, whilst you're in university, of course, you've got downtime in the summer. So if that's a six to eight week break and there's a film production happening locally with you, I will just let you know that this now. As a line producer and production manager, I have reached out to some emails that came in to me with people from universities on film media production courses that happen to be local to my production. And I offered them employment paid employment at trainee rates throughout their mm. time off from university. So not only were you doing a media production course, but you're actually coming onto a film set and doing it for real, being paid for it, and then taking those finances back into the fun pot for the college the following year. And I continued to do that with one person for three years, believe it or not, which then became a part of my team then for the following four years. So there's always hope. Um, but when I was at university, I um, did uh, supporting artist work that Tyrone alluded to before. It isn't necessarily a route into the industry, but it will give you um a bit of an understanding of how a set works and it's also good money in the holidays etc so that was something that that i did uh i, I think you know if you're training on a set then you know it should be paid work if you're doing a job it should be paid so i'm going to say that first of all and then i'm going to open it up um to everyone else Lloyd? Does Vicky what Vicky? Or Vicky? I think that it's 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 timing is the key thing. It's 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 what's happening. You need to research, you know, there's lots of Facebook groups, I think is quite good. There's um, you know, kind of runner Facebook groups and things like that. And they'll get um wind of what's happening. So when you when it's time then, you know, when you've kind of got your time it's good to um absolutely contact as many companies as you can because they'll be the ones kind of um you know preparing so in Cardiff I think you know well Saw's a good one to kind of um you know Screen Alliance Wales are good to contact and um also like Bad Wolf themselves because they're kind of based in Cardiff and they've always got things happening um as a freelancer it's difficult to know what's going to happen when you're ready to take your role so I can't kind of you know help you but uh you know kind of point you in what would be going on but um I think um just get yeah, try and join us I think to everybody actually just see as how many groups of Facebook groups you can there's lots of like Cardiff runner networks or just runner networks on on Facebook and I think you know to join those you, you know it's it, it's it's a really good chance to kind of um, see what's happening and then you know and and then it's it's difficult sorry to kind of to point you in the right direction because without knowing what's happening you know if I knew there was some productions coming up I could give you some contacts but yeah it's um 
it's is, is that okay sorry look there's Sorry, I was just going to say there's a lot of people I've taken on some various productions of mine as I was line producing production manager and um, where I would get the emails directly myself um, with this particular kind of question. And, you know, the best way I've got around it is to actually approach the director personally and ask if they'd be willing to have some kind of shadowing experience experience with a potential participant i'm not saying working for free it's a shadow experience mm. because of course a director is really really busy in a day and and a, it's really difficult to, to to take their time up but just to look for a day or so is an invaluable experience to watch a director at work and also you might get to spend time with them and ask them some great questions and i know gareth evans who was on our first event today mm. is a very much a huge champion person of mm. that kind of moment if the moment suits yeah there are schemes as well there are shadowing schemes like with you know, BFI, I think, do a shadowing scheme, um, you know, different organisations. If you do, you know, it's, it's research as well, but it's just, again, just getting emails out, finding people's emails, get sending emails, sending emails, you know, like, and then we'll, we'll get the right person. And yeah, I could just say, um, I was working on War of the Worlds with um, Ben A. Williams, and he put a uh, notice on his Facebook page if anyone wants to come and shadow him. Uh, to come down or get in contact with him. He had like over 600 replies. So th th there's, there are people out there doing it. And also, like I said, I've, I've, I've uh, spoke to people that were a, um, AD floor runners and they've gone on to be producers and directors. And also it's, it's, it's the world's oyster, basically. It's whatever you want, want to do there. So just, just keep trying. Um, well, the... International productions, obviously, um, they are um, the, the 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 main difference is like the location that you you get to work on different location with the uh, different um, nationalities. Like um, I did work, I've worked in France, Lithuania, Malta, um, and uh, obviously they have their own culture. They've got their own way of working. Um, it can be tough, but the, 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 the good part about this industry and the UK business is that we have uh, a lot of Americans investing in the UK. And we, I mean, even the Lloyd mentioned that they are the, the, um, the, uh, the, the, the way they work is a bit different, but in terms of structure, they are quite, they are quite similar. Uh, when I work internationally, um, for example, when I work in Lithuania, it, the, the 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 biggest problem is just like kind of uh, the language that kind of you might um, encounter that you, they might not understand. But a lot of the people who obviously employed to work in um, international movie, movies, they are they can speak English, but they they can they still have that problem of understanding of like body language or certain needs that we kind of have it easy and then we take it grant for granted in the UK and America but like in uh, even in Europe they might have a uh, problem with and working hours and you know the, for example the culture of working for example when I was working in France last year they would uh, want to do still like a less hours like let's say 10 hours whereas in the UK and America they, they prefer look uh, the work hours could be different uh, in, in some countries they they prefer to work continuous days that which is like you know 10 hours a day 10 10 hours a day and they don't have a break uh, they, these are the issues the other problem is that from a financial uh, financial point of view is the currency um, uh, differences that in the UK obviously we only use sterling or in the states we use US dollar in those countries we have um, their local currencies and then that kind of that, that, that those differences can cause a, uh, cause a bit of issue. But in general, normally, like, there is a uh, universal language for film, especially for creative people. The, the main issues that we faced was like, it, it was mostly for production accounts. But creative world, they, they almost like speak the same language. For example, if you've got, I mean, obviously, I'm not a creative, I can't speak uh, on behalf of the creative world, but I can see that like if you're if you're an editor 
you kind of use a similar software either here or a different country. Or if you're a director, obviously they've got their own methods, but they kind of they understand each other uh, very well. They, there isn't there isn't a big challenge, but they they, they could be some um, they, they could be some problems, but they they are not major. I mean, uh, it's quite easy to work in inter, in international productions. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Yes, can, can I just just um, come quickly on you, uh, what Mary just said about creative international, mm. but also logistics as well? Mm. I just say a really quick story, and I promise it'll be quick. But some some experience I had was as, as a first AD. I, I was working over in South Africa, working for an African company over there. Whilst we were creating the show, the show or my episode also had to shoot in Cambodia. So so we were. I left the UK for four months away from my family. The sacrifice I had to make at the time with their full support. I went to South Africa and I lived in Cape Town for sixteen weeks whilst working with a very diverse group of. Of, of African wonderful filmmakers, really passionate about the work and really good at it. And I was um, the only person from the UK, including the, the Irish director. And then we were flown from South Africa to, to, Thailand, um, to Bangkok, and then from Bangkok over to Cambodia to Siem Reap. And in Siem Reap in Cambodia, they have no equipment. They haven't got cameras, they haven't got sound equipment, they haven't got a crew. So they hired a 747 airplane from Thailand, put a whole crew on it from Thailand, including equipment, camera cranes, trucks, everything you can name it was on this airplane. And they flew it into Siem Reap to meet myself and the director and the line producer stood on the runway watching this enormous plane arrive with 350 crew stepping off from Thailand to include the gaffer of the beach, which was Leonardo DiCaprio's film, which was uh, like a 70-year-old man walking onto the set with this wonderful experience. He'd done all the Mission Impossible films. And here was a little man from Aberystwyth stood in the middle of this heat watching a whole army come off this plane. And what a wonderful experience. They were wonderful, kind people and just made me realise that the planet is a small place for our industry to live and thrive on. It's such an exciting world to be a part of, and I'm so lucky. It really, really is. But also weird something? things happen in TV and film, right? <laughs> Just like that. Can I, can I add something? Please. If, uh, if you're thinking about your food a lot, and if you've got a bit of fuss in your food, you make sure that you know you take your food with you. Because last year when I was doing the aqua, I was struggling to eat the food. I was... It, 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 they, 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 you know, different locations, they've got different food, food habits. And even though they bring their caterers on set, but they still use, uh, they still cook their local food. And uh, you might like it, you might not, not like it. Do you bring that to your consideration if you're traveling for work? <laughs> That's a very good question, question. isn't it? Um, yeah. um, do you know something? I want if Axel is coming on to any of the events tomorrow only because I know there is a Danish lady on the event called mm. Maya Jensen who's a female camera grip uh, working in London and and is dealing with all those issues currently and um, so if Axel is on um, the event tomorrow then possibly that is a good question for tomorrow as well but what I do know as a filmmaker and um, uh, Brexit will bring some serious challenges in January, um, especially for us in Wales. I've been very lucky to have developed and worked on some budgets involving EU, EU film grants and, and tax uh, innovative uh, schemes as well. I'm sure Medi could really touch upon that as well. But there will come a time post-Brexit <clears throat> that things will be challenging and difficult on a film making front in regards of funding. In regards of the work to work to law or work to rule, um, it's very much that we all have to look into that ourselves individually, especially as employers, because it becomes a full, full new challenging prospect for us to, to understand what the right laws will be to employ people um, wisely, securely, and, and more than anything, mm. legally in our country um, post-January, well, I believe post-December, isn't it, going into January? Yeah, 
Mm. But by the way, you can Google it. You can Google it. Interesting enough, if you Google film, and um, I did it myself recently, and European and 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 working time or working regulations in the UK, there's a whole array of things you can have a look at. So in the chat, really helpfully, Pauline has put a link to that. Uh, oh, there we go. BFI, BFI I believe. Brexit yeah. Visa, yeah. Um, and we'll put that on the any fact sheet that we send out afterwards as well, because I think that's hugely important. Um, it depends where your passions are. Entertainment is like working practice is slightly different to drama. Um, experience as much as in entertainment so I can't really um come that too much drama wise um production runner um again it's kind of you know it's looking at what production companies are are in basically if you want to stay in Cardiff or you know obviously if you want to go further afield like Bristol if you're happy to travel or, um if you want to learn or you know got somewhere to stay then just get your but um, just find as many um, like production companies as you can. They're filming. Just look on things like like the knowledge, and then there's emails that get sent. You know, you can subscribe to certain emails to find out what kind of knowledge is one of them. Um, there's other kind of don't pay anywhere because you can get this information. You know, from free. Uh, mm. They can give you the lowdown of what's in prep. Um, you know what's going and just try and just research just find out you know i'd still do it then if i you know there's something i think oh something's working you know who's who, who's the and i'll imdb the production and and you know more often than not you said they've already put it up on imdb and then you can kind yeah. of research you know it's all about kind of research and you know you have to kind of put the time in and kind of get your cv out contact people um and just you know just keep going persistence is key you know it's like that's how i did it and you know a lot of people i know you know didn't haven't progressed because they they may they found other ways they didn't put it was you know they didn't persist as much and um but i think you know it's all about just researching find out what's happening in the area yeah contact the production companies find you know saw a really good they're really good kind of um contact as well and it's just about what's coming up um yeah and just keep keep going i don't know if that's thanks help. vicky that's um, great thank you Faye, might it be worth signposting a wonderful scheme called it's my shout at this stage as well for yeah. our participant uh, a real good um scheme for people to look into wisely um, and again we can put that on the fact finder sheet I'm yeah sure. absolutely we'll put links of any kind of programs that will give you some of that practical experience starting out but again what Vicky said you know uh, it was the BAFTA Cymru Awards last week which production companies won <laughs> because they're the production companies making the programs so you know do that research have a look at the organizations that engage with Film Cymru Wales. Um, you know, there are a lot of organizations, a lot of production companies in Cardiff, in Wales, working here, making international co-productions, you know, and, and that's really, really exciting. Um, but it's about seeking them out, looking at what's coming up in the news, what's filming, when. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um... I do know people who have worked as runners to get themselves sort of an entry levels and production assistants who've got themselves in foot through the door and then have gone on to become writers. Um, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if I'm completely honest. That's that's just me. Being yeah. <laughs> what the best what the best thing to do is part of it's luck, I, I guess. Mm. But, um, can I just say that EastEnders run quite really. Um, interesting moments where they will hire onto the editorial team they're still currently doing so now um although that they are very much up against the COVID-19 challenges as we all are um but uh they very much champion assistant script editors um which is a really good entry level and they fully understand that that is entry level um and um I 
um, again, we should signpost you to BBC Stenders um, mm -hmm. and the BBC Academy, BBC Studios Academy. These are places where you can research and you can actually reach out to these people and ask those questions directly. They will help you. They will support you. I think Casualty is a similar, it's got really good mm. department, Casualty has. I started, one of my entry level jobs was script, um, like a, a script assistant on Casualty. And that gives you such a good, amazing, you know, that is a great entry level, I think. Mm. It's, and there's lots of schemes as well. There's like a, that things, you know, I think Bad Wolf have a writer's room, you know, and there's a, there is a thing called the writer's room, actually like BBC Writer's Room. Yeah. Um, which and also- resource. Faye, and also to signpost back to Film Cymru Wales. Um, there's some wonderful moments there for people to really look at that website in regards to what our gentleman's just said now, in regards of development and, and writing um, talent surgeries that we have as well. Um, there's, please just check the website out and read for yourselves it, it, it and connect to us. Same time, don't forget about uh, making good coffees and tea. So there's a lot of YouTube trainings like about uh, making. Good <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people would... go on to really great careers because they make good coffee or get it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> or get the John Lewis coffee machine. They're really good. I'll come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> These are imp it's important stuff listen I need to wrap up I'm just going to check that there is no more questions we have got through them all um, thank you so much to everybody for all your questions um, a huge thank you to the panel for giving up their time today it's been really lovely talking to you